6.1 is on uh, mid-segments of triangles. So a mid-segment is um, the segment that joins the medians uh, of two sides. So it says um, if a segment joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So this is a midpoint. And E is also a midpoint here. And you can see the markings that indicate that those two segments are congruent on each side. So like this part is congruent to this part, and this part is, oops, and this part is congruent to this part. Does that make sense? So we have the midpoints, and then we draw a segment connecting those two midpoints. That's called a mid-segment. Okay, so how many mid-segments will a triangle have? Will it just have one? No. It will have three mid-segments. Okay, so think about why that is, because there's going to be one here and here, right, connecting those. There's going to be one here and uh, here, which we had. And then what about the other two sides? So one here and here. Does that make sense? So we're going to have three mid-segments. I don't know why I did that line to the wrong place. It should go to E. All right, so the first one says find X. So it gives you a little thing here. It says that the um, it's parallel to the third side and it's half as long as that side. So if we have 45 right here, this x minus 1 is going to be half of 45. So do we know half of 45? 22.5, exactly. So that means x minus 1 has to equal half of 45, which is 22.5. So x is going to equal 23.5 then. Okay. Yeah, I added the one over, yep. All right, so it says identify all pairs of parallel segments. Okay, so we have all these markings that indicate that we have mid-segments. Okay, so that means that UY has to be parallel to what line? Guys, you with me? So UY has to be parallel to BX. Does that make sense? Okay, what else has to be parallel? So there's two other sets. So how about UW has to be parallel to, yep, TX. And then the last one, DWY is parallel to TV. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Does this make sense? All right. So find X and Y. So all of these mid-segments are half of the side that's parallel. Um, so the side of the triangle that's parallel. So we can set up lots of equations. So like this Y is going to be half of this other one, right? So Y is equal to half of the 2X, my, uh, 2x plus 1. Okay, that's not going to help us right now. Do you see why that doesn't help us right now? Because we have X and Y. So let's look for another equation. So how about the X? X is going to be half of what? Mm -hmm, perfect, 3x minus 6. Now, I don't want to have fractions if I don't have to have fractions. So another way of saying something is half of another thing is we could say the, uh, the first thing is double the second thing, right? So I can say that the long one is double the other one. So really, I could have written this as twice x equals 3x minus 6. Isn't that easier? OK. So we're going to um, subtract the 3x over, so I get negative x equals negative 6. So I get x equals 6. And then we take that and we go back up here. So we're going to have y is equal to 1 half of 2 times 6 added to 1. So y is going to be half of 13, which is 6.5. So we have 6 and we have 6.5. Make sense? All right, so I made up one that has x, y, and z. Okay, so let's see. So let's look for things that are going to use this x. Um, like we'll only have equations with x or only equations with y or only equations with z. So let's start with, do you guys see 2x and x plus 6? I don't set those equal to each other, do I? I have to write an, a, a way to relate them with like a 2, right? I could say 1 half or double. So I could say 2x, if I double it, I get the whole length of x plus 6. Does that make sense? Seems weird, doesn't it? So let's see. So I get 4x equals x plus 6. So 3x equals 6. So I have x is 2.
Well, I don't have any other mid-segments. That's my only mid-segment. So who has ideas now on what I'm looking for? Yeah, there's nowhere. I mean, I could plug an X here, so I'd get 4 and I'd get 8. That's not really helping me too much with that. Okay, so what was our definition of mid-segment? So a mid-segment um, joined the midpoints of two sides. So we can do this marking, and we can do this marking, and we can do this and this. So now do you see the two other equations? So we're going to say that 4y plus 1 has to equal 6y minus 11. So no doubling involved on this one, because now these two pieces are equal to each other. So I get 2y on the right, and I'm going to add that 11 over, so I get 12. So I get y equals 6. And then I do the same thing over here. So this segment and this segment are equal to each other, because we knew AB was a mid-segment. So that has to be a midpoint. So I have 10z minus 16 equals 3z plus 5. So I get 7z equals, I'm going to add the 16 to the right side, so I have 21. So z is equal to 3 then. Does this make sense where we're getting these? So basically if we have a triangle and we have something in the middle here, this mid-segment, this is going to be half of this distance. But if that's going to be a mid-segment, these ones will be equal and these ones will be equal. Okay, so we always have to decide what we're doing. Are we suddenly equal or are we doubling? Okay, so how about the next one? There's lots of x's. So we could do lots of things here, it looks like. So let's do, let's start with the PQ and the ST. So we're going to have x plus 85. Is that equal to 3x plus 46? Yeah, so we're going to double the x plus 85, and then we're going to set it equal to the 3x plus 46, or you could take half of the 3x plus 46. So we have 2x plus 170 equals 3x plus 46. So I get x equals, and I'm going to subtract the 46 over. So if I subtract 46, what do I get? 124. So I get x equals 124. And then you could plug in that 124 and you could find lots of links in that. Okay. Um, a lot of times I'll say, like, find something else. Um, yeah, the SAT does that a lot. And it's frustrating. I'm sure I missed that on the SAT because I was always, like, quick to find the variable, but then I didn't actually read the question. Do you guys do that sometimes where you're like, oh. All right, 5.2, so perpendicular and angle bisectors. So this is another pretty easy section. So perpendicular bisector theorem, so it says if a point is on a perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Okay, perpendicular bisector means perpendicular, so 90 degrees. So that's why I have this little angle drawn in. But it means it bisects the segment as well. So bisects means it breaks into two equal pieces. So doesn't it make sense that it's the same distance from those endpoints? So what I mean by that is it doesn't matter where we are on this line, if I have a point right here on the perpendicular bisector, this distance to A and this distance to B, exactly the same distance. Okay, so it doesn't matter where you draw it, it could be here and here. This distance is the same as this distance. Does that make sense? Think about patty paper on why that would be true. If you fold it over perfectly on itself, is it going to make a little triangle? Um, that triangle is going to have congruent sides. All right, so the converse to the perpendicular bisector theorem says if we have um, two sides that are congruent like that, so if a point is equi equidistant from endpoints of a segment, then this line drawn in has to be the perpendicular bisector. So it has to break it into two equal parts. And again, think about the patty paper. Think about folding it over on itself. Doesn't that have to be true? All right, so example one. So it says we have um, 3x plus 9 and we have 7x minus 17. So what do you think we're going to do with those two pieces? Set them equal to each other, right? Isn't this like obvious that you would like look at the picture and be like, oh, those look like they're the same. 
right? So we just set them equal to each other. So 3x plus 9 equals 7x minus 17. So we're going to have 4x when I subtract the 3x to the right. Then I'm going to add the 17 over, so I'm going to have 26. So I get x equals um, 26 over 4, which reduces to 13 over 2. So you can leave it as 13 over 2, or you could write 6.5. All right, so it says if xw is congruent to zw, so if these two pieces are the same, and measure of xyw, so xyw, this angle right here, is 5x minus 19. And this measurement right here, so zw or zyw is 3x plus 34, or not 34, 3.4. Find the values of x and y. Okay, so let's start with the y's first, the things that were given originally in the picture. How do I think, how do you guys think we find y? <laughs> we set them equal. So we're going to have y squared minus 1 equals 5y minus 1. So luckily we can add 1 to both sides and we get y squared equals 5y. And some of you guys might know what the answer is right here. Okay, but when we have a y squared and a y, or an x squared and an x, usually it involves factoring. So almost always you should get everything on the on one side of the equation and set it equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to do that. So we're going to subtract our 5y to the left side, and it's all going to be equal to zero. This is sometimes a difficult one for even my Algebra 2 students to factor. It's like they forget how to do this. Okay, it's not a trinomial. There's not three terms. It just has two terms. There is a GCF, something that's in common to both. Do you guys see what's in common to both? The Y. So all you have to do is pull that Y out. And when we do, we have Y minus 5 equals 0. So we get two solutions. We get Y equals 0 and we get Y equals 5. Now in geometry, we should always kind of make sure that these numbers work in the original. We never want to have like negative segment lengths. Do you guys see what happens if we have Y equals 0? When you plug it in here or here, what do you get for that segment length, like xw? Yeah, you get negative 1. Does that make sense? No, you can't have that. So we're going to cross that out. Does it work with 5, though? Yeah, it looks like both of them would be 24, right? So we have 24 and we have 24. So 5 works. Now we go back in and we want to find what x is. So think about your patty paper. We kind of have this like isosceles triangle thing going on over here where these two sides were the same, and if we fold it over on itself, these two sides will be the same, and also these angles will end up being the same. Do you see it? So we're going to set those angles equal to each other. So we're going to say that 5x minus 19 is equal to 3x plus 3.4. And we're going to subtract over. So I subtract the x over, and then I add the 19 over, so I get 22.4. So x equals 11.2, and that's our answer. And you could plug back in to find those angle measurements if you wanted to. But it just said find x and y. Still feeling good okay, okay about this? All right, so the next one. So find the two possible, possible values for x. Okay, so I'm not shying away from this factoring idea. We're going to factor. We set this piece equal to this piece. So we're going to say 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 is equal to 2x squared plus x plus 3. We're going to get everything on one side, so I'm going to subtract them to the left side. So I have a positive x squared, so I'm going to have a 1x squared when I subtract the 2x squared over. I'm going to subtract the x over, so I have negative 2x minus another x, so minus 3x. And then I subtract the 3 over, so I have plus 2 equals 0. so then we factor. So we have two sets of parentheses. Our first two spots need to multiply to be x squared, so we have x and x multiplying to be x squared. Our last spots here need to multiply to be the positive 2. So numbers that multiply to be 2, 2 and 1. Okay, we need this outer and inner to combine to be negative 3x. So right now we have outer swoop is 1x, inner swoop is 2x. We need them both to be 
negative in order to work. Oops. So we need a negative and a negative. So negative and negative in there. Does that make sense? Do you guys all remember this from algebra 1? So we get x equals 2 and we get x equals 1. Okay. So I'm guessing that those work because it said find the two possible values. But you can go back in and plug in and just make sure you don't get a negative. I don't think you do. I think you get um, positive links there. All right. Does that make sense? Factoring doesn't go away. You do it the rest of your time in high school. So if you don't know how to factor, let me know and I can help you. All right, so angle bisector theorem. So this one says if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then the point is equal distant from the sides of the angle. Okay, so if it is, um, so this is the angle bisector. So if we have a point along here, so here's where the point was, this distance and this distance is the same. Okay. So our distance is always perpendicular to that line. It's like going straight to that line. The converse says if we have this distance and this distance the same, then these two angles are the same. Can you imagine this with your patty paper, folding it over? Those two triangles would be perfectly on top of each other, so those two angles would be the same. All right, so it says find x, jk, jm, and kl, round to three decimals if necessary. Okay, so we have that this and this. Um, because of these angles over here being congruent, these two things have to be the same. So we have to have x plus 5 is equal to 2x minus 7. So I have x, and then I'm going to add the 7 over, I get 12. So I have x equals 12. So that means I have 17, and I have 17 here. You can check, you can plug them in. So that was the jk is 17, and that was the jm is 17. So we're good there. We found x, we found jk, we found jm. So the last thing we need to find is kl. So KL is this distance over here. Boy, stop talking back there. So how am I going to find KL? Any ideas? The Pythagorean theorem. Do you guys all see it? So we have 17. Oops, that's not a very good right angle. But. So we have 17 here. And we know that this part here is x plus 7 right here. So we plug that, that in that x, which is 12, and we get 19. So we have 17, 19, and we need to find um, this distance, which I'll call z. So I do 17 squared added to z squared equals 19 squared. So 19 squared minus 17 squared. I end up getting z squared is equal to 72. So z is equal to the square root of 72. So just make sure it says, so see how it says round to three decimals, so it's okay that we can get the decimal version. Sometimes on like Math Excel, it would say give an exact answer using radicals. So you'd have to simplify the square root of 72. But in this case, I have 8.485. That's going to be that distance, um, KL. So that's going to be KL. Okay, do we still make sense? All right, so the last one, so same idea. So you have markings, this marking and this marking are the same. So imagine taking this triangle and folding it over onto the top of the other triangle. Okay, they should match up completely. So this angle and this angle will be the same. So we're going to say that 5x minus 2 is equal to 3x plus 14. And we just solve it out. So we get x equals 8. That one's much easier than the last one. We should have put that one first, right? All right, does this make sense? Do you guys get it? Okay, so that's 5-1 and 5-2. I'm going to stop there for now.